There you are. <laughs> this is your clicker. Thank you. This is your stage. Have fun. Great. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. It's my first time in Hamburg, and I'm thrilled to be here and sharing this presentation with you. So thank you for filling the room and um, playing along for the next 20 minutes. So what we're going to talk about today is, oops, go back. There we go. So what we're going to talk about today is the media landscape. We know that it's ever-changing and um, very disruptive and somewhat um, in a state of emergency right now. So we'll first talk about that. Then we'll go into content marketing and really the role of influencer marketing within that landscape. And lastly, we will talk about the study of 300 influencers and really go into their minds of how you can work best with them through their perspective. So we know that the power of consumer choice has really changed the media landscape forever. Um, I come from a traditional media background. I work in magazine publishing for 10 years, so this is all too familiar to me. We now know that over 20 million adults have actually cut the cord on cable. Um, I know in the US it's almost impossible that you would talk to somebody now that who actually watches cable and watches TV in real time. We're watching Showtime, we're watching HBO, we're watching Netflix, we're not sitting down and watching cable in real time. 30% of all internet users have actually um, downloaded ad blockers, which is really scary for those of us in digital advertising. The reason that people are doing that is because the ads they're being served are irrelevant, and nobody wants to be bothered with something right now that isn't relevant to them. Time of, is of the essence for us. We're all busy, we're all on the go, we're challenged and faced with so many things. We don't have time to be looking at things that aren't relevant to us. And then magazine consumption is down almost 40%, and that number is increasing by the day. And we see it in the headlines every single day. Is traditional advertising dead? TV's ad apocalypse is getting closer. Facing losses, Condé Nast, my alma mater, is actually closing up shop on magazines and selling off some of their properties, some of the properties that have been part of the family for years. And lastly, mobile ad blocking is becoming a bigger threat, something that we all have to be aware of. But while we see um, this happening, oops, a little trigger happy there again. While traditional media is really facing challenges and declines, social media is dominating the conversation. Nearly half of us, 46%, can't even get out of bed in the morning without checking social media. And this behavior really continues throughout the day. Two plus hours are spent on average on social media every single day. If you were to add that up over a lifetime, it would be almost six years of our lives will be spent on social media. If Facebook were a country, it would now be the largest country in the world with more than two billion users and there's three billion social media users across the globe. And the fastest growing of uh, the social networks is our fan favorite, probably most of your fan favorites as well, is Instagram with one billion users, 500 million of which um, our visitors of Instagram are visiting daily. And it's said that each of us checks our phone about 80 times per day. And so while the mediums have changed, the mechanism by which brands and consumers connect really hasn't changed, and that mechanism is storytelling. We know that from content marketing that storytelling has always been the most effective communication strategy between brands and consumers. And today, really, the parlance of our times is social storytelling. And social storytelling allows brands to do something that no other media can do. And that really gives brands the opportunity to dialogue with consumers in a two-way dialogue in which they can have an actual conversation. So in the context of content marketing, really the most compelling social stories are told through influential voices. So we love this quote at Hello Society at the New York Times, and it's, a brand is no longer what we tell the consumer it is, it's really what consumers tell each other it is. Think about that for a minute. So we've always known um, word of mouth to be one of the most effective communication strategies, but today word of mouth has been given a much larger stage and allows for a new sort of level of impact through social media. And because of that, we see that 21 of the top 25 accounts on Instagram are actually people. They're not brands. There's only four brands that really even have um, you know, a piece of that pie. And those brands are Instagram themselves, National Geographic, 
the Real Madrid Soccer League, and Nike. So out of those top 25 accounts on Instagram, the four of which have brands, only one is an actual consumer product goods brand. When we talk about millennials, arguably the most sought after demographic, we know that millennials are now more now likely to trust experts than traditional advertisements, even if those experts are complete strangers. So we now trust strangers more than traditional and credible media sources. And millennials are significantly more likely to be influenced by social media than traditional advertising. When we look at Gen Z, these are about our 18 to um, infant age uh, consumers, they're spending three hours per day on social media compared to the two and a half for millennials. And 60% of these 18 years and younger consumers have actually already made a purchase as a result of social media. Imagine where that number will go in the next five years. But in doing our sort of marketplace sweep of research, I think the most staggering of the statistics is the fact that while we're spending all of our time on social media, 96% of the people who are spending time on social media, learning about brands and talking about brands on social media, aren't actually following the brand's own handles. So I would encourage you to think about yourself. I know that I am an absolute super consumer. I purchase multiple things per day on Amazon. I constantly have something being delivered to my doorstep, but I myself don't even follow brands. I'm not learning about brands. I'm not engaging about brands in social media, even though I'm a brand enthusiast. So brands really must go beyond their own channels. They can't survive anymore without really going beyond their own channels in the social media landscape. And that is really where influencer marketing comes into play. So we now know that 79% of internet users say they're most likely to hear about new brands, products, and services from social media influencers. And 92% of consumers say they trust influencers more than advertisements or even traditional celebrity endorsements. And the same is true for marketers. So it's not even something that's most popular or proven among the influencers themselves. Marketers are having great success with it. So 94% of people who are marketers who've used influ influencer marketing um, have said that it, that it has been effective for them. And more than 48%, nearly half of all marketers who use influencer marketing plan to increase their budgets this year. So how can content marketers really get the most out of influencers in 2019? We think the best strategy is to stop talking about influencers. We're always constantly talking about influencers. We're critiquing their um, followings, and we're talking about fake followers and all these things. We're often talking at influencers. Many times as marketers and brands, we're telling influencers what to do. Here's my brand message. Here's my, here are my assets. Put this on your sh channel and amplify it. But the best way to really leverage influencers and make them um, the most effective for your brand is really to talk with them, have a conversation with them, and get their perspective. They are absolutely experts in their own right. And if we take a step back and really engage with them, we can have more effective um, strategies leveraging them. So keeping this in mind, what we did is we embarked on a custom research study among 300 influencers to really find out their perspectives on um, influencer marketing, their perspectives on how their consumers are engaging with them, how their audiences receive brand messaging, and really the best tactics to get the most out of a partnership. So our approach was two-pronged. The first was a custom study conducted among 300 global social influencers. It was about a 20 question survey that was fielded to them um, via online. And we saw overwhelming response. We had 300 influencers respond in less than 48 hours. And that's because influencers really just want to be heard and they want a seat at the table. And then really to supplement the quantitative research, we had interviews, ethnographic interviews that we conducted in New York City and Los Angeles. We did about 10 personal in interviews, two hours apiece. And those interviews were among global influencers as well. So while they were people residing in New York, they were really people from all over the globe with different perspectives. And this is a glimpse into what our conversations elicited. The term influencer always makes me a little bit nervous because like, it's like, gosh, I'm not like Beyonce or anything like that. I would rather go by entrepreneur and investor. 
I'm just someone who's really interested and when I'm passionate about something and I want to pursue something, I do it. As long as I can help inspire others, like that's really all I care about. I think influencer marketing is effective because it's allowing for brands to finally be more relatable. We are building personal relationships with our audience. There's nothing better than somebody truly believing in what, what they're watching and aligning with their values. I think it's also effective because a lot of people actually want to be a part of the campaign. I think the biggest misconception about influencers is that they don't work that hard. We are the ones writing the emails, doing the research, going to the events, creating the content, editing the content, producing it. We wear all the hats. I do it all. So it's a lot of work. It's a big production. A lot of, a lot of times, um, a lot of brands don't realize that. I like to provide an escape for my followers. Hope and inspiration. Authenticity. A little bit of comedy. Infotainment. I'm providing inspiration. Do your research before you reach out to me in the first place. If you want to work with an influencer, it's because you love their creativity. If you come to me, you should trust me to tell your story. If you want to control it, buy a commercial. The sweetest pie is autonomy and creativity and the budget. Find a budget, give the influencers more creative control. Yeah, and just have fun with it. So I think one of the biggest learnings that you heard first in that video is the term influencer. I think a lot of us in marketing and advertising, the term sort of turns us off and it actually turns influencers themselves off. Nobody is really married to this term because we're not sure what it means. And now we've got a lot of people that are trying to get in on the action of influencer marketing. There's been an incredible increase of people claiming they're influencers. So what does that really mean? We actually wanted to find out from influencers if it isn't the term influencer, what does influencer marketing mean to you so that we can better understand how you view yourself? And so um, here we hear from Leanne Barlow. She said that consumers really get a front row seat into the like minds, um, the lives of like-minded creatives that they admire and respect. Influencers are really the go-to for thousands of followers who have grown to love and trust their opinions. Next, um, Nole Gary said that as influencers, we've really worked hard to build a connection and trust with their audiences. So something that the term influencer doesn't really speak to is how a person became influential. Really, what is it that made them influential and how did they garner the interest of these vast audiences? Um, James from New York said, influencer marketing allows consumers to experience products in real life settings. Influencers use their day-to-day -day lives as immersive marketing campaigns. So in that, really getting the perspective from influencers on what they consider influencer marketing, we wanted to take it a step further and find out what they actually thought themselves, um, what they considered their role to be. And overwhelmingly, we found out that influencers don't actually want to call themselves influencers. They actually consider themselves content creators. 76% are posting five or more times per week. More than half are spending more than five hours on each single Instagram post, and 86% really consider them workaholics, and their work is organic content creation for social audiences. And so while they were most likely to consider themselves content creators, they're actually least likely to consider themselves brand ambassadors. And the reason for this is that 82% of influencers actually create one quarter or less of their content for brands. So think about that, 75% of influencers' content that they create for social is organic. It's editorial content that they're creating to engage an audience. Brand partnerships are just a small piece of the pie for them. So we asked um, Travis White, an influencer out of Texas, really what influencer marketing really should be all about. And he said it should be, be be about creating content that is relevant for your followers and featuring brands that fit naturally. And be clear about the sponsorship. So hashtag ad, hashtag sponsored should never feel scary to an influencer or to a brand really when it's done right. And that's when an influencer uses or likes the brand or they think it's something their audience will organically and naturally benefit from. 
So this is great news. I think the, the fact that influencers don't necessarily um, consider themselves brand ambassadors can feel a little scary to brands because brands want that. They want ambassadorships from influencers. But I actually think it's really great news because I think influencers are first and foremost really editor and chiefs of their own brands. Their ad edit ratio is exactly where it should be. They start with editorial content and they mix in advertising organically. And brands should feel really good about this because it helps brands stand out. So when influencers are aligning with a brand, which they love to do when it's done right, really the number one reason um, or the number one thing that they look for when partnering with a brand is how well the content aligns. This makes absolute sense considering that influencers consider themselves more than anything, content creators. So when they're vetting brands and considering brands for partnership, they're really looking for that organic sort of content alignment. That can be through aesthetic, that can be through voice, but it really has to feel synergistic for an influencer to want to work with a brand. So when an influencer and a brand really get together, what happens and what is the role of influencers in the consumer purchase journey? So 83% of influencers see the role of influencer marketing in driving awareness and consideration. So right now, in the current state of influencer marketing, influencers are really sitting at the very top of the purchase funnel. They're really own discovery. They are the ones driving exploration and discovery of new brands, products, and services for consumers. Well, what you'll see here is that the conversion role of influencer marketing is pretty low. And I think that we all have to be okay with that because the reason for that is that we're not really using influencer marketing the right way today to drive conversion. So we asked influencers, really, what do you consider the number one mistake brands are making? And overwhelmingly, the number one mistake influencers think brands are making is not partnering on long-term partnerships. So what's happening is brands are going to influencers and they're tapping into them one time, one post, here's my product, put it out to your audience, and let's see what happens. But they're not really giving the consumers or the followers the chance to move through the purchase journey. One exposure to a brand, product, or service isn't gonna result in ROI. That's not how a consumer mindset works. So there's a great quote here from Lars. She said, brands partnering with influencers long-term is really the best method. I don't think uh, mentioning a company once really instills it into a consumer. Followers need to see loyalty from the influencer before they themselves can become loyal. And so we tested this out against um, our clients and our partners to see, we've been in business of influencer marketing for eight years, so we looked at our proprietary data to see, is this in fact true? If a client works with an influencer on multiple posts or multiple partnerships, do they actually see more return on investment? And the numbers here absolutely prove that out. So there's a 75% higher sentiment on the final post when an influencer posts on behalf of a brand three times. So while you might fear that there could be some fatigue by that third po post, we're actually seeing the opposite. The deepest engagement is happening on the third post. 11% higher engagement is on that post as well. And then lastly, this third point here, that brands that re-engage the same influencers two or more times see 56% higher engagement. So when we wrap up a, a client partnership, what we do in our wrap report is we provide insights into each particular influencer and make recommendations on which influencers brands should come back to for multiple times. So quickly, our key takeaways as I wrap up today is the first that, you know, Social media has really defined, redefined how consumers and brands connect. And it's this idea of word of mouth and this great quote from Scott Cook is that a brand is no longer what we tell consumers is, it's really what the consumers tell each other it is. Next is um, where influencer marketing really comes into play. It's at the confluence of consumer attention and brand communication. And it's really helping brands and consumers connect on a human level through social storytelling. The best way to work with influencers is to remove that term from your vocabulary and focus on them through the lens of content creation. Consider an influencer a content creator, really play to their expertise and strengths, and you'll get the most out of your brand partnership. 
And then lastly, influencers currently own Discovery. There's no sort of doubt or argument that they are absolutely sitting at the top of the purchase funnel, helping brands to drive awareness and consideration. But really to get the most out of influencers, consider a long-term partnership that allows consumers to go on that journey with the brand and move through the purchase funnel to conversion. That's it. Thank you. Pamela, thanks very much. Thank oh, you. thank you. I wanted to shake your hand. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so you you started influencers as as we saw. So I have one question for yes. you because I'm if if I would like to start a career in influencing, <laughs> what would you advise me to do first? So I would, what is it? I would first ask you, do you have a passion for social content creation? Yeah, let's say <laughs> yes. <laughs> do you are you a skilled content creator? No, not yet. <laughs> So how do I get the skills? I think that's where I would start. I think, um, again, sort of removing that term influencer. I think influencers are influential as a result of being able to create really cool and organic social content creation. So develop a passion for creating content. Okay. And you have to come up with a consistent content strategy. And that would be a good starting place for well, you. Well, there's no age limit, right? Because my, most of the influencers are quite young. No, oh. no age limit. So it will be, be so okay for influencer me. Influencer marketing is ageless. <laughs> okay, okay, I see, I see. So let's talk about that backstage a little bit more okay. because I need a new career. Thanks very okay, much. Good. Have Thank a great you. time in Hamburg. Great. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>